Welcome back to HRNHQ, Ed DeRosa with Sarah Albadwi, here to discuss Lone Star Million Day. We're in Louisville. They're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Sarah, and hopefully we're giving out some winners, and they're giving out a 2022 Ford Escape. Wow. Yeah. We can't be there to claim we can't our be new there. vehicle, no. unfortunately, but hopefully we can cash some tickets that might be worth one Yes, or if, pizza. If we win a lot, we can call up the winner to help us carry our money away in that Ford Escape. But if you're not on track, which I'm sure many of you, almost all, I would say, of you will not be watch and wager wherever you do that. And it is a big day. Six stakes races, all part of an all-stakes pick six, all-stakes pick five, all-stakes pick four, several all-stakes pick threes, and several opportunities starting at the end, race 12, the Sexton Mile. Mark likes a long shot. I like two long shots. I don't know who you like, but you're about to tell us. I like a long shot as well. And really? might be the same one that you like. We haven't discussed it yet. We have yet. not. Let's Hopefully see. Hopefully it's a surprise. I'm very interested in number seven. Oh, no, it's kid. different. All right, great. Then I'm glad we have some <laughs> different opinions to go over in here. But I think the um, agreed upon opinion is that we are all shopping for a price. Absolutely. And against Shaz. Shaz, yes. Did you see when I said Shaz Wow in the Slack channel? I sure did. It was funny. It was a good one. <laughs> it wasn't the worst one. Better, th better than the next one. Yes. Which I I've agree. thankfully forgot by now. I did too, but thank you so much for bringing <laughs> it back to my attention. I'm sure I'll never forget it. Popular um, kid. Popular kid. Yeah. Not either you or myself, but popular kid, the horse. Uh, this is a horse that's been around for a while. It's one of those older veterans, just like rated our superstar that I remember from a ways back. He's eight years old now. So seeing him come up in the entries is kind of like a throwback <laughs> each and every time. And the trend that I noticed about him that makes me very interested in him in this spot is that anytime he has a turf race, he's won his next dirt start on a couple of different occasions. Mm. And I noticed that last time out, he had a turf race. So I went back through the PPs and this is something that they did last year in October. He ran against Spooky Channel in a turf race and he came back to win two dirt races. Then I went back to May of last year, same thing. A turf race at Lone Star wins the next dirt start. If you go back all the way to 2018 at Del Mar, mm -hmm. turf race comes back and wins the next dirt start. And it doesn't really seem to matter against what type of company that turf effort translates to a winning effort mm -hmm. on the dirt. So at 15 to 1, that like was it. a trend that I saw that I was really interested in in here, not liking the favorites. I think that he's a very viable long shot. And then Rated R Superstar, I want to touch on quickly, is having sure. another trend that I noticed in the PPs recently for this year. He's kind of one good effort, one poor effort, one good effort, one poor effort. If you subscribe to that notion of belief, he's due for a win in this spot. Due for a win. A win or just a good race? No, a win. Okay. He's had a win and then a nothing effort. Yeah, but win. the win is relative to the competition. I mean, he's been in stakes company. Like if he were in the Met Mile, you wouldn't say, oh, it's his turn to win. No, but in the Steve Sexton Mile Steve stakes. Steve Sexton Mile. I do miss the Met Mile being on Memorial Day, but we do have the Sexton Mile. You're on a price. I'm on a price. I like mine that star a little bit. Actually, I like him a lot at 20 to 1, enough to make my top pick at a price. Uh, stretches back out, has a win at the distance. I like that. And the last race, which you know, I have to assume people are going to discount being at Sunray Park, Six furlongs, I mean, totally not his bag. Looking at his PPs, definitely more uh, middle distance route type. So he gets that here. And I don't know that he was even meant to win that race. It was probably just better than the rest of those as a multiple stakes winner. And he did get the job done going six at Sunray, cashed a nice check. This was clearly the goal, or at least I would think, with uh, the, the big purse relative to what they run for in New Mexico. So... I'm going to play him at a big, big price. I think Flash of Mischief is interesting as well as uh, the speed has to go from the outside. Could make some noise. Mark likes the two. You're on the seven. Three, nine for me. At this point, I don't, even though I don't like the two, seven I like do like a little better, but heck, I'm going to use the two as well because if I get live to this last leg, we're all against the favorites. I want to give myself a shot at a score. Absolutely. And I think maybe just everybody except the five, six and seven or five, six and eight, excuse me, you could be looking at something pretty valuable in this all stakes pick six. Yes, I agree. All right. Well, 
part of the goal, I think, for both of us, or part of the path to getting live to the long shots in the 12th, might come in the 10th race where I am willing to single. That's the Ouija board on the turf for fillies and mares. I thought it was a two-horse race between the two obvious ones, and when push came to shove, I did land on the shorter price or likely shorter price at post time, but I had to go with the speed. I agree with you, and that's number nine, Park Avenue. I think that this is a very viable single in what could be an otherwise interesting sequence and looking for some prices elsewhere. I think this is the horse that you could possibly rely on. It seems like she just kind of lays over this field. Is the outside speed. Her only turf start so far was a win. She got a 90 buyer speed figure doing that against Allowance Company. On the dirt, she's faced Merneath. CC as time goes by, <laughs> horses that are just right. much better than what she's facing in here. So let's say the turf is her preferred surface. I think she has a big shot to wire the field. Yep, and uh, you have to take a short price, but I think when you're laying out, where can I take a stand so I can allow myself to be deeper in a race like the Sexton Mile, where you're trying to beat all the favorites, uh, this makes sense. Is the stand and. As Mark uh, pointed out to us, and we'll point out to you with some imagery, uh, the track at Lone Star, the turf course, does is kind to front runners, those who like to be on the lead, or at least that's been the case this meet. So lots of things conspiring in that one's direction. Single for both of us. Any other leans, uh, either in the all stakes pick six or pick five for you? Well, briefly, I just wanted to say there's lots to like in this race with her being on the front end, but everyone should like and subscribe yes, they should. to our channel. Like this video, make sure you subscribe to our channel for future content. But to start off the sequence, I was actually interested in a price in that race seven, the Chamberlain Bridge Stakes. Number two, Spirit Animal is a horse that used to be with Chad Brown. For quite some time, he ran against grade two, grade one company. He ran in the grade three pilgrim as a two-year-old. Kind of didn't pan out for Clarevish. They ended up dropping him. He got claimed. This is his first time in 13 career starts that he is sprinting on the turf, which I thought was a little bit interesting. How long is the pilgrim a mile? Uh, I don't remember, but it wasn't but not it wasn't five for right. okay. <laughs> So seeing that he came back with a six for long sprint to finish second on the synthetic at Presque Isle Downs, obviously much lesser company, but the back class is there for this horse. And maybe he just loves sprinting five for longs on the turf and 20 to one morning line and not loving anybody else. I was definitely interested in putting him on my ticket. I have ranked second currently, but I am going to hedge a little bit to say the first three races in the pick six, races seven, eight, nine, I am against the favorite in all three. I have noted, oh, this is the morning line favorite, and nothing stuck out to me. We were like, oh, man, I got to dig in. Maybe this could be another single. So I tepidly noted that I'm against the favorite. I rank the others, but I have yet to see Ragas and Data or Colts Neck, and that'll probably shape my final opinions in those first three races. I've seen enough out of races 10 and 12. That's the Ouija board and the Sexton Mile to know the directions I'm going in there. All that to say, agreed with you, that horse is live, also against the favorite in races 7, 8, and 9. This has the makings of what I think could be a pretty juicy payout. Perhaps life-changing. Perhaps pizza. Life-changing a, life pizza. a lifetime <laughs> supply of pizza. Uh it's about it, though. I mean, it, this is an exciting one to play, and it's Memorial Day. Rich Strike is going to work at Churchill Downs between races, so that'll be going on. I'll be watching whatever's happening at Lone Star. They had a lot of rain for this day last year, hopefully dry, good conditions. Someone's going to win a uh, 2022 Ford Escape. And perhaps it could be someone we know at Texas, um, maybe Jeff. Maybe that's Jeff. Horse. That's right. Jeff, uh, his charting horse value available later next week. This will be up throughout the weekend. Best of luck with all your wagers. And thanks for joining us. Like and subscribe.